Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sanford Kahn, economic consultant and business author. We have a national election coming up in about five weeks or so. Actually, we have elections on the state and local levels, too. A timely subject would be, with all the confusion of candidates, what they stand for, what they don't stand for, <laughs> uh, how do you determine which candidate to vote for? You could use personality, and I admit some of the personalities of the candidates running, especially for president, especially one of them, leaves a lot to be desired, and a lot to be desired. Uh, but still, how do you determine which candidate to vote for? I'm using the advice I got when I started engineering school a long time ago at the University of Florida in Gainesville. It came from the head of the department at that time, Dr. Joseph Wheel. I think you spell it W-E-I-L. And he gave us advice. It was a run-credit course, Introduction to Engineering. If you attended the course, you got an automatic A, one credit A. I wish all my courses were as easy as that one, but uh, believe me, it was just the opposite. Some of them kept me up quite late at night. Anyways, his, simple, his advice was very simple. He said, pointed his finger right at us and said, keep it simple, stupid. And I don't think we were stupid, but I think that's to give us a sense of humility. So let's keep it simple. What is the factor? What is the one determinant that could help you decide which candidate to vote for? Look at, as I say in the, some of the endings of my videos that I have on my channel, a secure future lies in economic growth. That's where it lies. It lies in economic growth. There's no absolute security, but a secure future. A secure future for you, your families, your communities, and in this nation, actually any nation, lies in economic growth. So therefore, why not choose the candidate whose policies, especially their economic tax policies, will lead, will lead to vibrant economic growth? Growth comes from entrepreneurs, business, small business people. It doesn't come from the big, it comes from the small. The future does not belong to the big, it actually doesn't belong to the small, it belongs to the swift. Those men and women who have a dream and want to put their capital on the line and start a legitimate business. They could be small at the beginning and they hope to grow. High taxes and over-regulation will snuff out, will suffocate their desire to grow and prosper. Why should they put their money on the line if the government's going to tax away a good portion of their profits and income? They have no incentive. So therefore, look at those candidates that, that will have policies that will give people the incentives to invest to work, save, and invest. High taxes, over-regulation destroys that incentives. That's both on the federal level and on the state level. We have a future. We have a brilliant future. But it's, it's going to come from those people who want to start a business. It's not going to come from the established. They're okay. They employ hundreds if not thousands of people. But the future lies with the new people into the, into the business environment especially those who wish to start a new business. And over-regulation, especially on the local level where you have these special requirements, special licenses that you have to get that cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars. When you're starting a business, you don't have that much capital. So you want to give people the incentives to grow and prosper. So pick the candidates, both on the local, state, and national, presidential, senate, U.S. House of Representatives will have policies that will encourage new business formation. Remember I said new business formation. That's where our future lies, in new business formation. Apple when it started, Google when it started, Microsoft when it started, were all small. Then they grew. I remember when Google started, it was private at that time, it was like small. And then it just grew. And that's what you want. You want new entrants into the market. So that's what you should aim for. Aim for those people who are business friendly and want the economy to grow and prosper. When the economy grows and prospers, you prosper. Look at the thing to be aware of with politicians is this class warfare and class envy is the refuge, the refuge of cheap politicians that have nothing to offer. They have nothing to offer. So they go to class warfare and class envy. It is destructive. It is negative. 
no good will come out of it. Think of it this way. Money is equal to opportunity. Doesn't mean if you have money, you have more opportunities. I agree. Doesn't mean you'll be successful. You just have more opportunities. If you tax away money, tax away money away from those, which is opportunity. If you tax away money, opportunity away from those who have done well within the rule of law, of course. Do you not also tax it away from those who wish to do well? You cannot hurt one without hurting the other. It's impossible. We are all connected. We are all connected. Let me give you an example uh, of taxation that was destructive. That was signed by a Republican president who should have known better. Uh, president Bush, George Bush the first, the father, not the son, the father. Um, when he was president, he signed this luxury tax bill. Uh, he went along with the Democrats. It was a special surtax on luxury items that would be expensive. Furs, jewelry, yachts, things of that nature. For the wealthy. It was to get the wealthy, okay? Get the wealthy. Let me tell you what happened, because I know what happened with the yachts. So they had a special wealth tax on yachts. You know what happened to the uh, yacht business, the construction of yacht business? It collapsed in the United States. 25,000 plus people in Florida who built yachts lost their jobs. These were not wealthy people. These were people in the middle to lower rungs of the economic ladders that were now out of business. They had families, they had children, they had bills. They're now out of business due to this nonsense. So where did the tax really fall? It fell on the middle to lower rungs. This is somewhat personal to me because I knew somebody in the business here in California. He was a yacht salesman. He sold yachts. He wasn't wealthy, but he made a decent lifestyle, a de decent living. He had a nice little condo in Sunset Beach, California, which is a nice area. It's now part of Huntington Beach. When that thing passed, he lost his job overnight. Overnight. For as long as I knew him, which is several years, he never recovered, both mentally and financially. It devastated him. He always had some small part-time jobs here and there. I lost track of him after several years. I don't know what happened to him. But he never recovered as long as I knew him. You know, there's consequences to all actions. You may want to tax the wealthy to get even with the wealthy. But eventually it comes down and the tax filters down to you. It filters down to the middle class. It'll destroy it. High taxes and overregulation not only destroys an economy, it destroys the middle class, and we're on the road to Venezuela. I talked long enough. Just remember, for all of us, a secure future lies in economic growth. That comes about by giving people the tax incentives to work, save, and invest for your futures. Until we meet again, may you prosper. Bye now.